Hi, I'm Bobby Bissett, architect for Failover Manager. In this brief video, I'm going to demonstrate starting a Failover Manager 2.0 cluster. I'm going to start a cluster with one master node and two standby nodes. I already have Postgres running and have installed and set up Failover Manager. We'll start by specifying the addresses needed by each agent. These match the values specified by the bind.address property in each node's properties files. The .nodes file for our first node can be empty because there are no existing nodes for it to connect to. In this way, the second node would need the address of the first, and the third would need the address of the other two. However, because we already know our initial addresses, we can paste them into each file for simplicity. When an agent starts, it will try to connect to each of these. If an agent isn't running on that node yet, that's okay. Now we can start the first agent. A cluster status check shows that it's running. You can see that the allowed node host list only contains the address of our first node. Now we'll add the next two nodes addresses. Without this step, they would not be allowed to join the cluster. You can see the new list in the cluster status output. Now we can start the other agents. A cluster status check shows which ones have joined. Because we haven't specified any other information, the priority standby is set by the order that the nodes have joined. Instead, we could have specified the priority when we ran the EFM add node command. This can be set either before or after the node is joined. As an example, let's set the .153 standby as the primary one. The command can be run on any node. Now the cluster status shows the standby priority that we want. While the agent is running, the .nodes file is kept up to date for you as a convenience. As an example, the .nodes file on our master contains the addresses of the two standby nodes. This is all the information it needs to be able to join if you stop and start the agent again. Let's add a fourth node to the cluster to illustrate this. I have a third standby database node already running. First, we give it the addresses of the other three nodes. Then, run the add node command to allow it to join the cluster. Let's make it the primary standby as well. The cluster status output shows this, even though the node hasn't joined yet. Now we can start the fourth agent. A check of the .nodes file in the master shows the new address. This is the end of the cluster startup demonstration.